Hi, right, this is Ryan from BetterTattooing.com. Today we're going to be telling you why you shouldn't create washes with colored pigment. Rock and roll. Yo! All right, now that's over with. <clears throat> this is something I see a lot. People creating washes with, with color pigments <clears throat> when they're doing things like watercolor tattoos or even try to do blends and stuff, right? Now, <clears throat> there's a big thing, uh, a caveat here that we want to throw into this before we actually start talking about stuff is that there's there's two main types of pigments that we'll see nowadays, right? We have the powder pigments and predispersed. Now, predispersed colors, even though people do mix them, they're not meant to be mixed. Right? That's why they have so many colors available. You see a, a color line with 140 different variations. It's because they're mixed to be used just as they are. And when you buy all your different colors and you can blend and overlap in the skin on average, but you're not going to be sitting there trying to custom mix things out of it, right? <clears throat> There's a few reasons why. And this also goes why you shouldn't be creating the washes with, with colors, right? One of the main ingredients in all of the color pigments that we see nowadays, especially in predispersed, is going to be white ink, right? Now, <clears throat> regardless of how the white is 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 presented, right, white reflective substance, if it's TiO2 or you know if it's a zinc oxide or barium sulfate or the like, these additives are going to be added at certain quantities to try and tint out colors, right? So when we have like a blue. <clears throat> and we're trying to tint it, and the tint is just going to be changing that, that individual value of this color to make it brighter, more reflective, or darker, more absorbent. But it's never going to stray from that initial tone, right? We're going to tint it with something darker, and we'll just say black on one side, because it's the easiest way to tint down. Like if you have a medium turquoise, you add black to it, you get a dark tur turquoise, right? If you want to make it lighter, we add white. And it makes it appear as if it's brighter, right? Now, we shouldn't create washes with colors because if we're adding white to anything and we end up diluting this mixture, we'll say a blue and white, <clears throat> um, we'll just say it's like a light blue, right? The amount of white pigment that's actually going to be available inside of this mixture is going to be greater than what we would normally see in just a standard blue with no white or black item to it. To create that tint, right? Now, there's something that we all know in tattooing. You never just do a lot of white in a tattoo, right? <clears throat> because what happens, it falls through the skin, and it pats out, it, it changes tone, it never actually comes out as white. Now, <clears throat> Because of that, because this is like such a great mixture of this white mixed with this blue, when we start mixing in water and we're creating a dispersion, what we're going to have is a greater quantity. Let's just change our color here. We have a greater quantity of our white pigment and less of the blue. So when we start adding water to it, we're going to be decreasing this concentration even more. And we're going to end up with a ton of white particles inside that, that space that's diluted in comparison with very little blue and the more water that we add in there the more we're going to decrease that blue pigment particle while still keeping a relatively greater than amount of the white and when we put it into the skin what's going to happen once it heals because it's been dispersed you're going to end up with very little color actually in there even if it may look good when it's fresh because you know it's all soft and inflamed and the epidermis has been ripped away and it just it just looks like it's good because it's sitting near the top of the surface when it heals if we have all those small white particles inside there that are still dispersed, right? There's not a lot of, there's not a strong concentration. There's not saturation by having everything packed close together because it's been dispersed with water. All of these white particles are probably going to settle, move out, aggregate together, create into in, like these the holidays, as we like to call it, these, these gaps in between where the pigment is. We're still not going to have a whole lot of blue. It's going to make the tattoo appear really, really, really light, weak in its presentation, right? So we try to avoid that when we're doing things like watercolor. Instead, what we should be doing is just keeping up with what's already there, right? Instead of washing things out and decreasing the total concentration of actual pigment that's being put in the skin, we still want to have a lot of stuff there. So we'll continue to tint, add a little bit more white to it, right? Or a little bit of light blue or something else that's already pre-mixed that's going to be bringing that up, right? You take like a mint green, you, everyone knows this if you're in tattooing, right? You have a mint green, you add it to it, it'll slide it up, right? And it'll keep it, keep making it lighter. 
we're not going to want to ever dilute it down. We don't want to dilute it down because as soon as you dilute it down, there's not going to be enough pigment actually in the skin to show, especially if you're tattooing like in the winter and somebody's prone to tanning when it gets to summer, there's not going to be enough there to actually deal with that light energy interaction for, for you to see it. So don't do that. Just tint it. You want to make it darker, lighter, add more color. Don't wash it out. That's it. Short one today. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing signing off. Thank you.